Huge names missing for Everton. Is Alisson back for the Reds? How's Vardy getting on? And as always, all 20 predicted 11s for the weekend's Premier League action. This is the Fantasy Football Cheat Sheet, where we give you up-to-date injury news, predicted lineups, who to transfer in, and loads more. And all from official sources. Let's go! You know it by now, it's the headline news. Some would call it karma that the biggest news of the week is Everton's lengthy injury list. They travelled to Southampton with only one of their front three. Of course, Richarlison is suspended for three games, but Hammers is out as well, who I know loads of you have got in your teams. It doesn't look like a serious one though, and he is only likely to miss one or two games. It's likely Ancelotti will go with Alex Awobi and Bernard either side of DCL who has scored in all five of his Premier League games so far. I mean, that is outrageous form, isn't it? And hey, should we just get off Jordan Pickford's back, shall we? It's reckless, I know, but he never meant to do Van Dyke like that, did he? It's football, let's move on. Although I would have Nick Pope and go for England. Just like Meza Ozil, we're going straight to the training ground this week. Well, Kevin! De Bruyne and Americ Laporte are back in training and likely to feature in game week six against West Ham. How are we feeling about Laporte and Diaz as a pairing, by the way? This game is captain territory as well. West Ham have lost the last nine games in this fixture and last week's skipper Raheem Sterling bagged a hat-trick at the London Stadium last season. They will be without Mendy and Fernandinho though. The latter in particular is a massive blow, not just for his fantasy points specifically, but City are far more likely to keep clean sheets with him in the midfield. It's worth noting that Zinchenko is available once again at left-back, who was on the bench against Porto during the week. West Ham, their opponents will be going in with a full set of players to choose from. Mikel Antonio has loosened up the old tight hamstring, and Saeed Ben Rama could make an appearance too. He is technically one of the best players the Championship has ever seen, scored 17 goals and got nine assists last season. Although apparently I thought West Ham didn't need wingers, but they've just bought a winger. Jamie Vardy is back in training for Leicester after he missed last week's game against Aston Villa with a calf problem. Villa are getting a bit lucky though, aren't they? Playing Leicester without their best player last week, playing Leeds this week without Phillips, Anyway, James Madison started against European giants Zoya Lugansk. He bagged a goal and surely has to start in game week six. I keep predicting him to start and Rogers just keeps mugging me off. But this is the week. If not though, Brendo, I'm coming for you. As we confirmed late last week as well, Soyuncu is out for some time. But could Leicester have pulled off yet another bit of quality business in Wesley Fofana? The young centre-half has looked very impressive and is a cheaper option to both Evans and Soyuncu. Keep an eye on this lad. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has backed his boy Greenwood this week. Rumours had been circulating about his off-the-field conduct, but it appears to have been a load of old nonsense. There's clearly an element of careful man management at play, and the 19-year-old will start banging again before long banging goals before long. Edison Cavani is also available for game week six, but there's absolutely no chance he's starting given his last competitive game was back in April. But in a couple of weeks time, it'll be interesting to see if he gets the nod over Martial. I mean, I'd personally give him the nod. Shout out to Marcus Rashford once again as well. Single-handedly making sure this country's underprivileged children have food. What a legend. Jose, as always, is coy on the fitness of Eric Dyer. When fit, he is probably the first choice centre-half, and Jose will definitely be keen to mix things up after their embarrassing collapse against West Ham. We're predicting him to start, though. And by the way, I love that from Lanzini. That absolutely made my weekend. Come on, you hammers. The next bit of news will be music to Chelsea fans' ears. Kepa won't be starting in game week six. The lad's confidence is absolutely ruined and it's actually not nice to see. Mendy has looked solid so far and Lamps confirmed he'll be the club's number one going forwards. Don't forget we'll be collating all this information into our predicted lineup section towards the end of the show. Let's find out which players we're welcoming into the treatment room. Now I know I'm stating the obvious, but Big Verge is out for what is likely to be the season. Some sources are reporting that he sustained multiple injuries in the tackle and could be out for up to 12 months. As sad as it sounds, it's hard to see Van Dijk being the same player ever again. On a positive note, Alisson could be back for Liverpool's game week seven clash with West Ham. It's very unlikely we'll see him this weekend though. The sooner the better really. Without him, their defence goes from champions to the championship, if you ask me. How are you going to play things with the Liverpool defenders as well? Does no Van Dijk mean that you lose confidence in Trent and Robbo? Let us know in the comments below. Next up, it's Deich, who is absolutely delighted to see me back in training. 
Yes, that's right. I've started doing a few 10K runs. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not really running. But one man who is, is Ben Mee, obviously. The claret skipper was clapped back into training this week, which shows how influential he is to the side. Slowly but surely, Dice is getting the band back together after some pretty lengthy injury issues. One man who is likely to miss out is Eric Peters. That's all I've got for you. I'll give you a bit of time to read that tweet. Okay, Arsenal. The Gooners' biggest worry ahead of the weekend is how far Spurs will be above them in the league. No, it's it's Willian. He was missing from their midweek Europa League tie and is a doubt for the weekend. And actually, another massive worry they've got is uh, Jamie Vardy. He scored 10 in 10 against them in his career and has only failed to score in one of the last six meetings. So Vardy's definitely one to look out for. And as I bitterly mentioned earlier, Calvin Phillips is out for Leeds. Much like the Fernandinho one, the injury will have a wider impact on the side. In honour of the man who received 125 yellow cards and six reds, we take a quick look at who suspended ahead of the weekend. One man who isn't on the list is Jordan Pickford, much to uh, Mark Bosnich's dismay. But three men who are, you can see to my left. Anthony Martial continues to serve his ban. Someone needs to tell him he's not banned from scoring goals when he returns as well. He's joined by Richarlison and Lewis Dunk. And it was a top draw trudge off by Dunk at Sellers Park, by the way, last week. A real like classic trudge. You know, but it takes about 10 minutes to get off. Who should you be getting in this week then? Sergio Aguero, the fantasy football goat. He's got two starts under his belt this season and is nearing full match fitness. Aguero has averaged nearly a goal every other game during his entire Premier League career and has the most hat-tricks as well. We know there's a lot of striking talent to choose from, but if he's fit in this Man City side, you shouldn't be looking anywhere else. Plus, not many people have him right now, so he could be the perfect differential. At the other end of the price scale, it's Adam Ola Lookman. Fulham actually look pretty tidy going forward these days, I know, with the addition of Loftus-Cheek and Lookman. Now look, Fulham will still go down, I know that, but it doesn't mean this slag can't pick up a few points here and there. One start, one goal, plenty more where that came from. And they've got a nice run of fixtures as well. Now Mendy is in sticks and Thiago Silva's nearing full fitness, Chelsea will without doubt improve defensively. Hopefully. It means Ben Chilwell can add clean sheets to his already impressive assist haul. He's got three assists in four starts in all comps and is on all of their corners as well. I know you love corner takers. At a much cheaper price point than the likes of Trent and Robbo, does this make him one of the most sensible defensive picks? It's time for your favourite section of the week. Let's get some predicted lineups coming your way. And I'm not psychic, by the way. I know you know that by now, but you know, these lineups are based on all the information that we've read. We don't know what the gaffers are thinking, really, but yeah, here you go. Right, that is all from us. I hope you got everything you needed from this video to pick your fantasy football teams. But just before I leave you, I've got to remind you about our Dream Team fantasy football game. We've got a new and exciting subscription service for you this year called Dream Team Coach. It offers projected scores, fixed to difficulty rating, projected price changes, and loads more if you're looking for that extra detail when picking your team. I've got it, I'm using it, and I'll top of my league. I mean, I am good anyway, but anyway. It's really easily available in the app, and there's a link in the description below. Let us know what you thought of the show in the comments. Tell all your mates about us. As always, tell your nan. We're working very hard each week to give you the most informative video on the internet for fantasy football. And let us know what your teams look like. Have you got any obscure picks? Right, I'm off. Good luck this weekend.